Hey, y'all need a break, listen to these stories from r slash entitled parents. Mom made me apologize to my siblings for trying to commit suicide. So I woke up in the middle of the night, and can't fall back asleep, and all I can think about is something that happened when I was 12. I didn't grow up to the best household. Forced homeschooling, no sports or outside activities. So really I was stuck home all the time. My mom taught me things while homeschooling, which was just me in the background watching her teach my siblings, I'm the youngest of four, but anyway, that's really besides the point, my main one is that I was depressed as f. I tried drowning myself in the bathtub, and got close to passing out before my body of course forced me up for air, as a child I freaked out because I knew what I was trying to do, but not exactly why. So I quickly got dressed and went straight to my mom. She then proceeded to only ask how did I try, made me show her the bathroom, and then she just shook her head and sighed, called all my siblings to the dining room, had them sit down, looked at me and said, you want to tell your siblings what you just tried to do and apologize. All I remember thinking was is she serious? But bit my tongue and told them anyway, I tried to drown myself, I'm sorry. There wasn't really a reaction, my two eldest siblings kinda just shrugged, but then my one sister that's just a year older later told me that she was happy I didn't do it, especially since nobody would want to see my naked bloated body anyway. So yeah, it was never talked about again, I'm not sure my dad was told. There was many attempts later in life to kill myself, but I'm 21 now, still depressed and have self-body image issues, I live with my boyfriend of 6 years and barely talk to any of them now. Edit, hello everyone. I just wanted to start off with I want to thank you for your thoughtful comments and sharing your experiences. It means a lot to me. I did not expect this to be read, let alone get to where we are right now, but again thank you. 1. When I posted this I was sleep deprived and hungover, still kinda am, but nothing like a coffee and a nap to fix that, so I'm sorry if it's not well put together. I pretty much never post so I don't exactly get the swing of things yet. 2. Please don't bash my siblings. I may have some problems with them but we still share the same mother and they were also mistreated. 3. To all the people going into my old posts and in the comments telling me to drown myself, as well as people who think this is a weird decomparing contest for karma with trauma, I hope you s yourself at work and then all transportation fails you. My parents stalked me. I am 21, I am a female, I understand that there can be dangers to dating but the way my parents go about it is ridiculous. I met this girl on Tinder a while, we've talked pretty much every day, we had our first date a week ago at the mall. It went great, but I didn't tell my parents because I know how crazy they are. Fast forward to Tuesday, we are having another date, this one I do tell my parents about. It was at the movies but I had the feeling I shouldn't have told them that, so I said, oh we're going to X mall to hang out. The movie went great and I went over to my date's place. I get texts from my parents asking why I'm not at the mall. My dad had driven an hour, to that mall, looked for me and looked for my car. Holy F you are insane. Then after, my dad tracks me with my phone and asks why I'm near the beach, where my date lives. Like dude. Listen, I understand wanting to value my safety but that was an extreme violation of my boundaries. I had a gut feeling telling them where I was actually it would be a mistake, I was correct. And they still don't see how effed up it is to stalk their adult daughter. Your sister died? Too bad I'll just empty the house. This happened 15 years ago. My sister died on the 27th of December 2007. The very next day I got a call from a neighbor telling me people were emptying the house. So I rushed down to see my aunt, uncle, and their four kids emptying the house. They never called my mother or me they just called my drunk of a brother and he let them in. When I arrived I saw a SUV bursting at the seams with stuff and my cousin driving off with a smug look on her face. I exploded called my mother to tell her about this. Then stormed into the house finding two of my cousins in the kids' bedroom rummaging through the kids' things, another in my sister's room going through everything and my aunt and uncle in the living room picking through stuff. My drunk of a brother was on the sofa downing a can of beer. I was beyond mad and screamed at them just what the f they think they were doing. Keep in mind I had just came from the hospital not five hours earlier. They smugly said, your sis is dead, so we want her things, I snatched the jewelry box out of her vulture hands and tried to throw them out. I was only 26 at the time so they took no notice. About half an hour later my mother shows up and all hell breaks loose. She screams at them demanding they bring back the stuff they stole but they said no, they needed it, for their grandkids, with that my mother threw them out. Ripped my brother a new one and locked up the house. Honestly, who steals from a dead person not even cold yet. Excuse me sir, your son just shot me. So this took place back in 2008-ish. In Iowa quite a few state parks have shooting ranges that are completely free and just have posted rules. As a rule, everyone is responsible for making sure the range is safe and clean. I had just bought a new pew pew and wanted to sight it into my shooting style. I'm a left-handed shooter but right-eye dominant. 
When I get to the range there's the usual people there, including the brass thief but he's a story for another time. The far left lane is open. I move my stuff to the table and start setting up my sled and other equipment. To the right of my lane is a father and son shooting a tiny bolt action 22. The gun was one of those that take a key to function every time. Now the kid was maybe 10 years old and seemed to know how to use the rifle because he was loading 22 shorts, using the key to reload and shooting again. He was being safe and keeping it pointed down range. His dad is giving pointers and overall being a good mentor. I load and shoot. Wait for range to clear and reset targets. His dad walks away leaves the kid to shoot. I pick up my rifle and start to wipe the barrel and was planning on waiting for the barrel to cool, shoot, wait zero and so on but no. I hear the kid fumbling with the keys and getting frustrated. Pop, I just got punched in the leg. It hurt, but in a weird way. The kid squeaks a sorry and I take inventory. I feel my leg and find the hole, it wasn't even bleeding yet but still my brain was going, holy f, 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 s, f I just got shot. This was prior to going overseas and will end up being only the first time I was shot. I look for the dad and he's fiddling with fishing equipment in the back of his truck. I say excuse me sir. He interrupted me saying, his son is allowed to shoot and they aren't moving. I say, yes sir but the issue is he just shot me. He laughs and says no he didn't. I take my hand off my leg and show him as by now it has started to bleed but not spray, that's good at least. He starts to argue that I must have shot myself because his son has been shooting since he could walk. I say accidents happen I'm not upset I just need insurance information for the ranger and paramedics as I need to call 911. He offers me $100 to just leave and say it was an accident. I say no and call 911. Other people on the range both started to gather and go find a park ranger. The dad keeps arguing saying his son couldn't have shot me because he doesn't know how to load the gun and if he did it was because I was downrange. The kid pipes in and says, yeah I do dad, you showed me and I did shoot him, it was an accident. At this point the dad starts to panic and starts tossing everything into the truck in a scramble to get away. Before he can, another shooter grabs the keys off the kid's table as they were also the truck keys. The guy gets more and more upset as I sit there with my pinky stuffed in a brand new hole. Eventually the ranger gets there and everyone starts yelling their side of what happened. The ranger calms everyone down as the police arrive and start sorting through everything. I explain the kid shot me by accident, the dad was freaking out and tried to leave but another person has his keys. They summon an ambulance and they look me over. The officers handcuff the dad and I was like wait, he didn't do any harm I'm not pressing charges. The officers explain that he was a felon and thus not allowed to be around guns anyway. I'm taken away and they remove the bullet no major harm done but it did chip bone. I know this wasn't an exciting story and on a scale of 1 to 10 for entitled it's only like a 3 but still. Also I probably would have reacted similar. Imagine that call to 911. Howdy. How's it going? Sorry to be a bother but I'm afraid I was given a high speed dose of lead and require assistance please. Kid sexually harasses my little sister. EM, he's just a kid. Needless to say, the area I lived in when I was younger had no shortage of entitled people to go with it. Now I'm not saying it's filled to the brim with these types of people, but you'd be surprised if you didn't encounter one if you were over there. This story took place when I, 21 male, was around 16. I have a younger stepsister, who I'll just refer to as my sister since we're as close as blood siblings. She was around 9 when this happened, she's 14 now. This happened while my mother and stepfather, who I'll just refer to as my dad since again, close as real father and son, were visiting some distant relatives, and me and my sister, I'll just call her Mel for the sake of simplicity, were staying with my grandpa, mom's dad, during that time. So, school was over for the day, so I went to go pick up Mel. Grandpa called and told me he's not home, since he was over helping a friend build a playhouse, if that's what you call it, for their grandkid. I told him not to worry, and asked if I could take Mel to the mall, and that we could meet up there since his friend didn't live too far from there. He said sure, and just told me to be careful. So I took Mel there, and we had a lot of fun. We went to a bunch of places, gaming stores, toy shops, ice cream, etc. Eventually, Mel decided that she wanted to go play at the in-mall playground. So I took her there, and told her to have fun, and that if she needed me or anything to just shout my name, or my nickname, I guess. If you didn't know, I have a nickname everyone refers to me by. Cross. Still use it to this day, in fact. She nodded and went off to play with the other kids. I went over to a nearby bench and sat down and started playing on my phone. I made sure to constantly glance over at Mel just to make sure she's okay and that she didn't get hurt or anything. At one point, I was approached by someone. Cross, is that you? I turned over and to my surprise, it was one of my best friends from high school, Zoe. She sat down next to me and asked how everything was going. I told her everything was good, 
I was just taking my sister out to the mall. She giggled and said that was really sweet of me, and that I'm a really good big brother. We kept talking for a bit, about life was going, school, family, all that, until at one point I heard an ear-piercing screech. Cross. I immediately turned over, and saw this kid, who looked like he was 11 or something, Dano, with one of his arms around my sister and the other shoved up her effing shirt. I suppose that caused my overprotective brother mode to activate, or whatever you call it, because I rushed over there with Zoe following behind, and I immediately wrestled my sister away from that little s. He got pissed and tried to grab for my sister but I swatted his hand away. Keep in mind, I didn't even really hit this kid, I just motioned my hand for him to go away, if that makes sense. This didn't sit well with creepy kid, let's call him CK, and he placed himself on the ground, like literally, he didn't fall over or anything, he quite literally sat and laid back on the ground, and started kicking his legs up in the air and crying and screaming. Meanwhile, me and Zoe are trying to calm my sobbing sister. Well, it's as if the CK's scream was some sort of forbidden incantation, because his entitled mombi showed up looking like she was about to rip someone's face off. E.M., who the F made my baby cry. Jesus Christ. If looks could kill, this woman would be in jail for mass murder. CK, it was them, mommy. They're taking my girlfriend from me. She spun her head to look at me, and then stomped over. E.M., you. What the hell did you do to my kid? Me, good question. Let me get back to you on that. I really just wanted to comfort my sister, I couldn't be asked to deal with this crazy lady. E.M., don't ignore me you little crap, you did something to my baby. What did you do? I just rolled my eyes. Clearly, confrontation with this woman is inevitable. Me, saving my sister. Is that a crime? E.M., he was just playing. What the F is wrong with you? Zoe, sexual harassment qualifies as playing. E.M., sexual harassment. Don't exaggerate. He's just a kid. He wasn't sexually harassing anyone. Me, he had his hand under my sister's shirt. What the F did you teach this kid? E.M., how dare you? Are you telling me how to parent my child? Me, no, but I think someone should, since you clearly aren't really good at it. That sent her into a rage and she started shouting obscenities and other unintelligible nonsense. During this whole S show, one of the adults in the play area must have called security because they came over here, eventually. Security, okay. Everyone just calm down now. What happened here? Me, well, you see. Obviously, Mombi cuts me off. E.M., this little crap hit my child and then swore at me. Then he tried to grab my butt. Jesus Christ. Her kid being a little creep was already bad enough. Security, son, is this true? Me, no. Her kid stuck his hand under my sister's shirt. I was trying to protect her. Zoe, I can vouch for that. He didn't lay a hand on her or her kid. E.M., effing little liars. Your parents must have done a s job of raising if you if you're gonna lie to a security guard. I wish I had said this to her, but at least my parents didn't raise to me to sexually harass people. Security, ma'am, please calm down. E.M., calm down. He tried to hit my child. He tried to grab my butt. Aren't you listening? Me, I did not. Ask everyone around here, they saw the whole thing happen, and I'm pretty sure the story wouldn't include me grabbing anyone's butt. Sure enough the people who saw the ordeal confirmed my story, and even mentioned who the entitled mom screamed and shouted at me. Security, okay, miss, everyone is saying that you initiated this whole situation, not to mention your kid was doing something that qualifies as sexual harassment, you got an explanation for this. E.M., lies. They attacked me. They attacked my child. Security, then why is everyone here saying otherwise? E.M., they're just lying to get me in trouble. Me, why would they do that? E.M., obviously couldn't come up with a good reason. So we just ignored her, and went to comfort Mel again, with E.M. shouting that she won't leave until she gets an apology. Around this time, is when my grandpa called and told he's outside the entrance to the mall, which is where the playground is. I told him I was near the playground and to come immediately because something bad is going down. He hung up the phone and entered the mall. I noticed him and waved him over. Keep in mind, my grandpa does not take any S from anyone. He's a real tough dude, and won't stand for any family getting hurt. When he got over, he asked what happened. Grandpa, cross, what happened? Me, well, you see this crazy. The EM, probably noticing my grandpa, thinking he was like my dad or something probably, came over. EM, is this little s your son? I'll have you know that he. Grandpa, don't. Talk about. My grandson. Like that. That got EM to shut up pretty fast. Grandpa asked me what happened, and I basically brought him up to speed on the whole shebang. That got him pretty riled up, as he thinks of Mel like his granddaughter too. 
Grandpa, so, do you often let your kid feel up little girls? EM, my kid did nothing of that sort. Security, the poor soul, trying to defuse the entire situation, can we all just calm down? Look, we can just look at the security cameras, which admittedly I should have done at first, and if it shows that your kid really did do that stuff, you'll be asked to leave. EM, my boy did nothing wrong. Zoe, he sexually harassed a little girl. EM, oh, stop with this, sexual harassment, bull s. He's a kid. He didn't know any better. Grandpa, and that's why it's your job to make sure he does know better, but it seems you failed in that regard. That incited more screaming, to which the security guard told her to shut up or he'll throw her out without looking at the footage. That seemed to do the trick so he went to view the security tapes. When he checked them, lo and behold, my story is corroborated. EM didn't like that, I'm afraid. EM, this isn't fair. I demand he apologize for hitting my son, and for trying to grab my butt. Zoe, why would Cross want to grab your butt? I'm pretty sure he has better taste in women than you. She called Zoe a witch and said that she's so beautiful, she wouldn't be surprised if anyone tried to grab her butt. WTF. Security, okay, that's it. We've already seen that your story is bogus, so either you leave or we'll have the police haul your ass out for disturbance of the peace and harassment. EM stamped her feet, but left as she was told, but shouting that she'll never come back. Like anyone cares, lol. After that whole ordeal, we left, dropped Zoe off on the way back, and went home. My grandpa said he was sorry for not showing up sooner. I told him it wasn't his fault. We ordered a pizza and then just sat down and watched a movie on Netflix. My sister was a bit weary around boys after that, but she eventually got over it and now it's just a funny memory we like to laugh at. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed my first EP story on here, and I may have more to share so look out for those, I guess. Peace. TLDR, creepy kid stuck his hand under my sister's shirt, Mombi gets pissed that we told him off, grandpa and security tell her she's in the wrong, gets thrown out. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.